baby hyena, a tiny cubby hyena that has had its face mauled, possibly by a sibling or a cousin. Now, this baby hyena looks depressed, I think, and I suspect that is because its face has been mauled by a bullying sibling or cousin, and the hyena is upset with its lot in life. It has clearly been born to a low-ranking member of the hyena clan, and this hyena says, what did I do wrong to be born to such a low-ranking member of my clan that I should be so abused as such a young hyena? Look at me. I have had my face and ears mangled, and I am but a few weeks old. I have even got a scar on my right shoulder already. Look. See how I am treated by my clan. One can almost feel the bitterness flowing from this little hyena's person. But he's a brave fellow, and hopefully he will make it to adulthood, or she will make it to adulthood, and be able to increase the rather lowly position on the hyena hierarchy to which he or she has been born. Good luck, little one. Good luck. Chew that tree, you'll feel better. Or go back inside. Up to you. An exhausted, exhausted elephant. sitting on the road, showing how exhausted he is. Very dramatic, very dramatic elephant. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm just too tired of walking through the bush here. Nobody pays me any attention, and I've just had enough. I'm not carrying on any longer. Tell everyone to just continue into the bush without me. I'm going to stay here for the rest of my life. See, in fact, I'm just going to eat dirt. I'm just going to lie here and eat dirt. Where are you all going? Why are you leaving me behind? Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up, Scarlet. Hurry up and keep up with us. Otherwise, you will be left behind. Ah, now a very small buffalo, which has still got a whole lot of amniotic gunk on it. That's not a biological term, by the way. I, I just use that term, by uh, amniotic gunk. Possibly some mud as well. And the umbilical cord still hanging from what will become the uh, belly button of that little buffalo. Hello, you sweet thing. I hope you stay away from lions because they will devour you at this stage of your little life. What a cute, sweet little buffalo. See how outlandishly large the little buffalo's legs are? And that is so that the little buffalo is able to run away as much as it can, as early as this in its life, when they are set upon by lions or when the herd is moving. It needs to keep up with the herd so that it can be protected. Good luck. Good luck. I hope that you grow into a large buffalo bull. A dusty, dusty crossing of the Mara River here in the Maasai Mara. Hippopotami looking at the wildebeest, saying to them, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And there a very brave or very stupid young wildebeest is forging ahead alone. And seemingly there are no crocodiles converging, which means maybe this wildebeest will be the hero of the day on his very first trip to the Maasai Mara from the Serengeti. He is approaching his seventh month. Oh, and here comes a large crocodile. Come on, little one, you get out. Someone's going to die today, but I don't think it's going to be the little path forger. Although the path forger is now being chased. Get out, quickly! Okay, he's made it out, the little one's made it out, and now everyone else is going to have a big fat panic because the crocodile is approaching. 
That is a monstrous big crocodile. Oh, there's the victim. No, surely that little one can't make it. Yeah. It's a distressing thing to watch this. These are the northern crossings up in the Masai Mara, and it's always a little bit distressing to watch because, well, it's difficult for them to get out of the water here, and there are crocodiles all over the place. Oh, a young male leopard. You can see that. He's got a magnificent set of golden orbs there behind his tail. And a rock monitor. And the rock monitor, you may be able to tell from the puffy nature of his being, is thoroughly pissed off. This is because the leopard is an imminent threat to his life. And, well, if you're about to die, you can feel very pissed off and afraid at the same time. And the rock monitor is trying desperately to make himself look as big and sound as terrifying as possible. He's also bringing his weapon, which is his slashing tail, to bear. And the leopard has decided that the rock monitor is much too intimidating and is leaving. It's absolutely amazing. Because a lot of monitor lizards do die at the hands, well not hands, so much as claws and teeth of leopards. Now a goshawk that is tearing apart a weaver's nest in the hopes, no doubt, of getting some weaver chicks. And I'm very interested to see how this turns out. The weavers have arrived back and are doing their best to bomb this goshawk and tell it to go away. Go away, goshawk. Don't eat the baby weavers. They've barely lived. It is a gabar goshawk. Oh, yes, and the weavers are really getting very upset now. Village weavers. But they have to be careful because this goshawk is quick in the air. And it would not be too hard for it to jump off its perch and catch a weaver. Peck, peckety, peck, peck. Well, I think it's getting in rather close now. I don't think whatever weaver chick is in there is going to say, oh, there it goes. Yep, that's it. Off goes the baby weaver. Not nice if you're a weaver. Fascinating if you're an ornithologist. I suppose it really all just depends on your perspective. The weavers are all very upset. The goshawk family is very happy because... Daddy has returned home with roast and baby weaver. And we, as observers, try to look on without emotion as nature unfolds in front of us. A boiling mass of disgusting catfish. Why do I call them disgusting? Well, because I don't know if you've ever eaten a catfish, but a catfish that's been living in mud like this tastes disgusting. They're not disgusting in and of themselves. They do have a look about them, however, that wouldn't be described as appealing. I don't think that were you to fish one of these fish out of this boiling puddle, uh, that you'd want to kiss one on the lips. They don't have the sort of lips that you'd want to kiss. They've got these horrid whiskers and very fishy breath. Now all of them, well some of them are going to die, some of them are going to be eaten by birds and possibly leopards and uh, maybe even lions and hyenas, but some of them are going to burrow into the mud, create a lovely gel-like home for themselves and therein survive for the dry season.